Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of A Handful of Hope. I am so happy and grateful to have Dr. Sam Reen with us here today, who is a personal development and success coach specializing in stress management, mindset, and work-life balance. She's a founder of the personal development and success coaching company, Core Fit by Sam Reen in Naples, Florida. She also has her doctorate in physical therapy and has worked as an outpatient physical therapist with over 25 years of experience in the fitness industry. Her articles have been published in Thrive Global as well as Florida Weekly. She's currently working on her book, The Success, My Mindset, The Keys to Unlocking Your Potential. It is her passion to help others become the most confident version of themselves and live their best life. Sam Reen, welcome and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Jesse. Absolutely. So this, just full disclosure, this is round two for us of trying to get Sam Reen's interview because of my technological ineptness. So I'm extra thankful that you've made the time to be here again and have been, have been so forgiving in my, my technological mishaps. That, that's technology. It happens. <laughs> yeah, you know, it really, it does happen. And it seems that I don't know about you, Sandrine, but one of the things that I've been struggling with how to do lately is I feel like, so technology happens, it's frustrating, and I have this list of to-dos that never seem to get shorter. And it ends up finding myself that when something like that happens, it's not just like this little mishap, it's like the sacrifice of this whole other section of the to-do list now that's not going to get done because of this other thing, which means the back end of it gets longer. And it seems like it's so hard just to slow down and pause and really take inventory with myself about what really matters most right now. What should I really be focusing on? Have you, have you been finding yourself going through that, dealing with that at all? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I have noticed that because I have a tendency and I've definitely worked on this a lot, but I have a tendency to put a lot on my plate, but what I found has been most helpful lately is prioritizing my most important tasks. And I, I'm a pen to paper person. So I always put, my top five, I always have a five, um, top five set of goals that I write down every day, even though I have other things that I need to do. If I don't get the other things done, that's fine. But if I can at least get the priorities of the day, the five things, five priorities done, then I find that really helps me because otherwise if I have a long list of things and then other things come up like technology, then it's just so overwhelming and frustrating because then you feel bad. You kind of yeah. feel like you've let yourself down by not accomplishing your goals and being a former perfectionist. I feel that it's, uh, it's really important for me to not set like a hundred goals, but just, just narrow it down. And the power of focus is key. So ever since I've started doing that, I found that to be so helpful just focusing on the top five goals and if the other things get accomplished then they do because inevitably life happens things things get in the way how do you decide what your top five are meaning like what what do you do to assess what's really most important because there's a lot of times I'll think that something is the most important but really if I take that time to pause and look at it in a different lens, I realize it's probably not the most important. It might be the most convenient or it might be the most immediately gratifying. How do you assess what's the most important? That's a really good question. Uh, so for myself and working with clients, we actually, I, I have an approach. So for my clients, I give them the same approach that I would use for myself in terms of narrowing down the my focus my top five so my my top five goals for the day actually are derived from my life goals so mm. i always have a um like a vision of where i see myself in 10 years five years a year from now six months from now in terms of all areas of my life with 
um, with work, family, health, finances, things like that. And um, I just, I break everything down into realistic goals and down to what I would like to accomplish this particular month, I like to make it realistic. So I might, I may have in all areas of my life, I may have say 20 goals, but I'm not going to focus on 20 goals at one time. Instead, I'm going to focus on just like three to five goals. So for instance, it might just be health or work and, um, and recreation. Maybe I want to just have a little bit more recreation in my life. So taking those three goals, I then make sure that every single day I'm addressing those goals. So those top five might include exercise, working on my articles for my business, um, things like that. So that's how I narrow down my focus. I think, again, it comes back down to focus. Um, it's really powerful. Do you feel, do you ever lose focus, Samarine? Because you talk, you, you strike me as someone who's very determined, very self-motivated. I'm curious, do you ever use, lose focus? And if you do, like what seems to typically be the cause of that? I know exactly what makes me lose focus. Um, for me, I'm one of those people that has to get seven and a half to eight hours of sleep. And if I don't, which is often because I have a three-year-old, um, and now actually he's transitioning from the crib to his own bed. So we're, <laughs> we're like anticipating waking up in the middle of the night more, which so far just, we just made that transition, but it's lack, for me, it's lack of sleep. Hmm. I'm almost positive I will have a rough day if I've had like five, six hours of sleep or interrupted sleep. Um, so that, that's a big one for me losing. Yeah. Just it, because if I, if I'm not grounded and sleep really gives me a lot of energy, helps ground me, then it's, um, it, it'll affect my productivity during the day, but other things too, if I don't exercise in the morning, I like to take out, 20 minutes, 15 minutes if I'm pressed for time and do some kind of exercise, go for a walk or jog and do some body weights. Even being at home now, I try to do something, but that's, that's huge for my focus. If I don't do that, I definitely see a difference, a shift in my energy throughout the day because the exercise sets the tone for the day. So I'd say sleep and exercise. Do you find that... So I, I've often found with clients that it, it seems like sleep, exercise, you know, those, those daily things that we all know we're supposed to do. You know, it, it's none, none of us are ignorant to the fact that we should be exercising, we should be eating well, we should be drinking water, we should be sleeping more, all those types of things. Watching less. Self-care, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> we all know that, but yet so many of us will cast it aside and not do it. And yeah. what I've often found is that many people, the reason they won't do the things that they know they need to do, the things that they need to do to help them optimize their focus when they're awake and accomplish those goals is because sometimes they have some sort of limiting belief around even believing that they're deserving of achieving what would be on the other side of those goals. And so if yeah. they, they deserve to achieve it or they believe that they're not capable of achieving it, why should they sacrifice in the short term eating that extra cookie, you know, sleeping in 30 more minutes, watching that show on Netflix, you know, whatever that is for them. Have you, do you experience that at all with your people you work with? Absolutely. Yes. So when people, it, it really goes back to their self concept, their self image. When people don't truly believe that they're deserving or good enough for great things in life. A lot of these beliefs come from their childhood, these limiting beliefs. When they don't believe in their true greatness, their inner worth, they often self-sabotage. 
with, and it's at such a deep subconscious level that this occurs, but they know they need to get sleep. So they, they still, you know, don't know how to manage, or sometimes you can't help it if you have a three-year-old, but if you um, need to get more sleep, get to bed early. If you need to get exercise in, wake up a little bit earlier, um, you know, have your clothes laid out in the morning. But if you have this internal belief like an internal critic uh, with your, you know, your thoughts, your thought patterns, your, your mindset. Again, it's on a subconscious level, but if you have this internal belief that you're not good enough, you're going to continue to self-sabotage and continue to do things that keep you from taking the best care of yourself. So diet, exercise, sleep, uh, other things in your life will suffer too. Your relationships, your work, a lot of the, Jesse, a lot of the work that I'm passionate about is in my coaching business is to help empower individuals, particularly women, to own their power by recognizing their limiting beliefs and really making a commitment to working hard to dive deep and change those limiting beliefs to empowering beliefs. For instance, in their childhood, they, someone might have told them, a parent, a teacher, oh, they can't do this or can't do that. And it, believe it or not, a lot of those beliefs set in way into our adulthood. And, and we don't often realize that, but they manifest in our relationships and our work. And we're often left feeling unfulfilled and wondering, What's, you know, what's the matter? And we're looking for fulfillment from material things or from people. But really, if we take the time and the effort to change those limiting beliefs, and that's, that's where I can help with accountability um, and then teaching the tools to tap into the subconscious to actually make changes to the, the neural pathways in the brain to create long lasting change so that um, they, they truly believe that they're good enough, you know, to help them really realize the facts, not someone else's belief, not what someone told them when they were eight years old or 12 years old, but the truth and truth is often that they're pretty awesome people that they didn't really do anything wrong, but they don't see that. And again, it manifests, um, in their life and in all sorts of ways. So, so the, the answer is really to tap into the subconscious mind with things like visualization, affirmations, goal setting, um, really working on tapping into that. But the main thing is working on changing the limiting beliefs. And a lot of people don't do that. They go to counselors or they'll work with other coaches and they'll talk about it, but it's not enough to just talk about it until they dive deep and rewrite the story and really make a commitment to changing the, the messages in their subconscious. And I, that's where I really help them. Um, until that happens, they will not see long lasting change. It's difficult. So I mean, if you're comfortable sharing, what is a limiting belief that you faced in your lifetime? and maybe contrast it because I think it's really helpful for people to hear personal story. I think there's, there's a really powerful thing and experience people have when it's, it's, it's people teaching, but it's also teaching from a practitioner standpoint, a practitioner point of view of, of that they've lived this. They're not just teaching it, but they've lived it. So if you'd be comfortable sharing, you know, maybe a limiting belief that you've encountered at some point in your life and, how did it affect life business before? And then when you did the work around it with it, what was the change like for you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to share for me. And it, it was, it was more rooted in when I was, um, when I was a child and I think when my parents divorced, it was um, maybe when I was six or seven and I just, I think it affected me. Um, it affects everybody very different, the uh, parents divorce, but that affected me a lot. And I just had this self-concept that I just, um, you know, my, I, 
didn't recognize my true inner self worth the um is yeah and over the years that manifested in struggling a little bit in school um but it helped me become more determined and helped me realize that wait a minute because i always had the mindset also somehow even though i had the adversity growing up um and with my parents being divorced so it really did affect me i um I always countered it with a gift that I had. I've always had a, a like a determination, a fire, and um, and I just always felt like I knew that I could accomplish whatever I set my mind to. And I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> uh, that's something I have been blessed with. But uh, I've certainly met a lot of mentors in my life, and then. It's just amazing people who have given me incredible advice, who, who are living what they were preaching. They were confident. They, were, they had great relationships. And I, I thought to myself, I want all that. And, um, you know, it took a lot of inner work. And finally, something clicked. But it wasn't until I tapped into the limiting beliefs And I really think that's, that's key. It's really working hard. Sometimes it doesn't take as long as people think. It doesn't involve months and months. It might just involve a shorter amount of time. Everybody's different. And it might not even be as painful as people think. Sometimes people think doing all that inner work is uncomfortable, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be as painful. It's just releasing the negative and creating space for something more powerful, more empowering. I'm just a firm believer. This, my motto in life is the sky's the limit. You know, I think it's so extraordinary that you had that innate belief that you could do anything you want. And I think that's such a powerful belief to have. And it's one that so many people struggle with because you're right. And if, if you face adversity, then when you have that as a core belief, your ability to navigate through that adversity seems to be much greater, much more successful. <clears throat> so many people though struggle with that belief or they don't have it or when they, they may have best of intentions. I remember reading something one time that it was a startling statistic. It was like that 90 plus percent of all the inventions or 95% of all the inventions that have ever been invented had been attempted before by one or multiple people. And the hypothesis was, is that these are people who had a really great idea, super creative, but they just couldn't quite see it through to fruition. And what ends up happening is the people who end up seeing it through to fruition are the ones that have the belief that they could see it through to fruition. So they'd kind of go around, look at the scraps that people leave, leave find the breadcrumbs and fall it to the buried treasure. With somebody who doesn't have that innate belief that you did, it doesn't have that innate belief that they could do anything that they can, they can accomplish anything they set their mind to. How do they begin to develop that? How do they begin to acquire that belief? It, it, you know, if somebody's at home right now, they're listening, they're watching, they're thinking to themselves, gosh, you know, I, I really want to start this business. I really want to work on my health, I, but I just don't believe I can, but I'm hearing now Sam Reen talk and I'm realizing that, well, maybe if I believed I could, I would. How do they yes. begin to cultivate, build that belief for themselves? Well, it's not, I want to say it's easy as believing that you can, and it is because you have to have that positive mindset, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. So you have to have that mindset, but it goes a little bit deeper too, because you can tell yourself something, but there's always going to be this discord, this tension if they deep in their core, don't believe it. So to help make that shift they need to really make a commitment to taking time out for themselves. Um, so what I mean by that is to set aside time to recognize what their limiting beliefs are and then working on rewriting those stories, those limiting beliefs to empowering beliefs, and then to take time out during the day to create a healthy lifestyle, to take time out during the day for for themselves, some kind of mindfulness. I love meditation. I think that is such an integral part of a healthy lifestyle. 
some people don't resonate with it. Um, but it, if you can take out 10, 15 minutes a day, you will see tremendous changes in your life. If you don't resonate with meditation, I would suggest doing something that allows you to be mindful, like walking or engaging in a hobby, just doing something that connects you with your soul to help you recognize that you truly are worthy. A lot of people, when they meditate, the things I have heard are incredible. Like I'm talking in the zone and it doesn't have to be a long time. Even in 10, 15 minutes, you can reap these benefits, but you will tap into this sense of peace that's in your center, the sense of recognition that you truly are amazing, that you're truly worthy. And all the stories that you heard as a child, all the limiting beliefs, they're limiting beliefs. They're not the truth. You'll also get inner guidance. I'm a firm believer in that. You just you just get guidance on maybe problems you have. You if you sit in stillness, you'll get the answers. Mm. So meditation, I think, is the key also. And then when you do all that, when you work on changing, make the commitment to change limiting beliefs. When you create space for mindfulness through meditation or something like that, you'll start to see those positive changes occur in your life that that's i i truly believe that's the key to helping people shift their mindset from i can't to i can if they aren't naturally inclined to think that way another thing which can help while they're making that transition to living more empowered and um you know getting out of that that kind of dark place that they're in Another thing they can do is to act as if, you know, if you smile, if you have really good posture, if you stand tall, um, you breathe deep and you visualize in your mind, like visualization, I'm a firm believer in the power of visualization. If you have a, um, have something imagined in your mind, your feet, like your future self, that you have the successful business already, you have the successful relationship already, you have, um, you know, you've lost 15, 20 pounds already. If you see it in your mind's eye, your mind doesn't really know the difference between what's imagined and what's real. So visualization is another really powerful tool. Affirmations are really helpful too. There's a lot of things. When you're, when you're, going through these mindfulness things you had mentioned you you get you'll start to get guidance the answers will show up how do we distinguish guidance from just another voice talking just another voice chatter because my imagination is is that many people and i know i I've, I've been this way before i've struggled at times with separating them because i'm so used to or i had been so conditioned to listen to these voices that would tell me all the things i couldn't shouldn't wouldn't why it wouldn't work and when I would start trying to really go within to look for answers, I struggled with trusting in that because I wasn't sure if that was just another voice or if that really was something more. So how do we, how do we distinguish the guidance piece from just another voice? So that's a good question. I, I think we all are gifted with, having intuition or like a sixth sense and not all of us tap into it some tap into it real well and some have to work at it but we all have the ability to a certain degree to tap into it and that's our intuition so how we know whether it's really our intuition or not i think it's if you feel your body tensing up um you know if you you feel like you have heard like something like you have the answer and it came from one of your meditation se sessions. I, I think if your body tenses up, you just know it in your body. Then if your body tenses up, it's probably not the right answer. If you feel still good and relaxed about it, you feel it in your body. Mm. Yeah. I think you won't okay. feel as tense. It's, it's like a knowing you just know there's no hesitation. We only have time for one more question, Samreen, and I wanted to circle back to one more piece that you said there that I think is really important that we just get clarity on. You were talking about when we were developing these new beliefs with ourselves about making a commitment. 
do we make a commitment? Is it making a commitment to ourselves? Is it making a commitment to a practice? Is it making a commitment to someone else? Is it a combination of the of the three or the four, or how many it is? What does that commitment piece look like, just in a little bit more detail? Yeah, so the biggest commitment is a commitment to yourself. Because when you make the commitment to yourself to, to do the work, to really put 100% effort to take a hundred percent responsibility that in turn is going to help everybody else and other things so if you can just do that one thing is make the commitment you could write it down it's like i'm committing for the next 30 days i'm really gonna do my visualization or meditation and and i would write it down i think it's, it's like sometimes with my clients i'll do a uh, behavioral like a contract then mm -hmm. I commit 100% to be responsible and 100% to make an effort during this time. Because we're creatures of habit, and a lot of times we're not comfortable doing the work. But it gets easier in less time than people realize. Habits can be, habits take on average 66 days to really form long term. But in the beginning, it's a little uncomfortable. But if you kind of power through, you really um, can can see great change, but you have to make that commitment. Mm -hmm. It is all about commitment and consistency too. Love that. Everyone, rewatch, re-listen, take notes. This is a wonderful, wonderful education and not just the power of focus, but the power of beliefs too. You know, Sam Marine laid out so many great skill sets and strategies that we can use, whether it's waking up and identifying your five things, the five most important things, the five things that are truly the most important to do every day, and the power of focus in helping you achieve those things. Not getting bogged down in distraction, which we're all susceptible to doing, but having something to focus on, something really key. And I love how she's framing each of her daily goals in context with her life goals. So what she's saying is she's saying she's being intentional with it too. She's not just raking up and at randomly grabbing at a few things, which many of us do, myself included sometimes, but she's looking at what are her bigger life goals, what are her biggest business goals, and then identifying her most important goals for the day in relation to that big strategy that you could adopt. Then we're talking about going within and looking at beliefs. My goodness, is this the deep work that we all need to do? Whether it's going in and looking at the belief of your able, ability to do something or your belief in the ability that you, your belief in the fact that you're capable of or you're deserving of doing that very thing. To make a commitment with yourself, to make that contract. I love the notion of a contract. Now imagine what it would be like if you made a contract with yourself, a contract that carried the same weight as a mortgage contract or a contract you make with your employer, a contract that you're going to follow through with the habits that you're going to go through. And when you do this work about going within and you trust in whatever comes up, you get that feeling of knowing that that contract states that you're going to follow through and execute on whatever that thing is, no matter how unfamiliar, how uncomfortable it may seem, but that you're in it for the long haul and that you're in it for you. Samarine, this has been absolutely, absolutely incredible. Thank you so, so much for doing this. And thank you an extra big amount for coming back and doing this round two and with the audio problems of the first time. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Absolutely. We'll see you next time, everyone, on another edition of A Handful of Hope. Bye-bye.